Klima Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Gerard Kisby Green about Mayflower Capital's plans for gold mining in Kenya and East Africa. Gerard, Mining Weekly would appreciate insight into what Mayflower Capital is doing at Kilimapesa Gold Mine. Martin, you will remember some years ago you interviewed me when I was CEO of Goldplatt. PLC and you know they really are recovery specialists and they had in their portfolio Kilimapesa gold mine which was a small producing gold mine but gold plat board wanted to return to its roots of, of, gold, of recovery and sought for years publicly to divest of Kilimapesa. Last year during the COVID the lockdown we noted that it was still up for sale so to speak and I met a, a chap called Robbie McRae and Jason Brewer, who are both with Mayflower Capital, and they said they were looking for assets in East Africa, gold mining assets, and preferably producing or near production. And we thought to approach the management of, of Goldplatt and ask them whether we could get involved. Um, it happened to be that there were some interested parties, but because of the COVID and the lockdowns around the world, none of the parties were able to travel to Kenya. And we were. And so we put a team together, traveled up to Kenya and did due diligence, legal, financial, technical, and in fact, took over operation of the mine immediately. And that was back in August last year. So it was really interesting that out of COVID, which is adversity and a terrible pandemic, came an opportunity for us. Um, and, and, and for that matter, for Goldplatt, because they, they managed to sell the, the asset which they wanted to get rid of. Goldplatt knew that this, the mine presented a great opportunity but always knew that they needed to invest quite significant capital to make it profitable and then, you know, be able to turn the pretty substantial resource um, to account. They were not prepared or able to raise that capital, and, and that's all public information. So Mayflower got together, and we are acquiring the asset and vending it into or reversing it into a existing London PLC company and for, for a certain transaction, and we hope for this transaction to be done a way of a reverse takeover by just on or, or, or shortly after the middle of March this year. It's been an intriguing deal, Martin, because, you know, again, Kalimapes uh, and Goldplatt knew that keeping the mine on care and maintenance was costing them a lot of money. And they felt they had a plan whereby they could restart part of the processing plant, acquire artisanal tailings and process that. And with the proceeds of that, keep people employed during the COVID period and take away at repaying some creditors in country. And we, we took on that plan as Mayflower. We put an operational team on the ground and we put $300,000 in and Goldplatt put $150,000 in to start that plan and provide working capital. And it, did, it, it worked immediately, notwithstanding the fact that the market had changed dramatically, um, the procurement of tailings was far more difficult and expensive, but we got through that and immediately started operating the plant tweaking the plant and improving the plant. And we've been operating it ever since. You've got this fantastic resource. You know, at the, Kilimpesa had a declared jork resource of 670,000 ounces. Um, most of that uh, sitting within the mining license. They have an existing mine with three edits, quite extensive underground development. And it's a mine that was, albeit modest, it was producing up to 6,000 ounces a year. And, and all it really required was to expand the processing plant and to in, invest in infrastructure. Mayflower is planning to reverse into a company called Papillon Holdings in, in London, uh, rename itself as Caracal Gold PLC, Caracal Gold being, the, being the, the cat, the animal, and immediately raise on the listing, raise upwards of $4 million, which will go pretty much directly into Kilimapese in the first instance. Shortly after the listing, we'll be um, seeking and, and already have in mind a couple of other East African assets. And we'd be looking to build up quite a substantial small to mid, mid-sized gold mining company. The great thing is we have an existing mine with an existing resource with the people, with the infrastructure, support of the government, support of the community. And so it's really a great place to start. We're just really taking what we've got and improving on it by putting in capital, by putting in the right skilled people, by investing in the plant, and importantly, by investing in ESG. You know, and I recall you coined the phrase when you interviewed me at Goldplatt, that Goldplatt should call itself a green gold producer, because they are. They, you know, they produce gold from 
pretty much the script of, of, of existing mining operations. Um, we see a similar thing at Kilima Pesa because, you know, we, we, we get our own water. We are, going, we are converting shortly onto grid power, which is all geothermal or originated. Uh, we plant trees, which provides our underground timber. You know, so we'd like to strive to become quite a green gold producer and in all aspects get involved with the community in terms of an ESG um, effort. And who is Mayflower Capital? You know, who's on the executive board? I'm just advising into, into Mayflower, but really it's Jason Brewer. So he created Mayflower Capital, and it's a small company that literally does what we're doing with Kilimapesa, is finding assets which are distressed or neglected, need some attention, need capital, whatever, skills, um, fixing them up and bending them into a, a listed vehicle, ideally. They were seeking a gold asset, and I happened to, to know about Kilimapesa, and got involved with them. The executive of the new company, once we're listed um, as Caracol Gold PLC, will be um, Robbie McRae, who's a local South African with extensive experience in mining in Africa, uh, myself and, and Jason Brewer. That $4 million you want to raise, a minimum of $4 million, what will be the priorities and what you want to spend that on? Most of that will be primarily split between the mine infrastructure and the, the processing infrastructure. The mine infrastructure is pretty much in place. There's not a lot to, 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 to spend there. On the processing side, we literally are going to, in, in very short time, double the production capacity. Um, there is a mill on site, which we have already sent to Nairobi and had a quote to, to totally refurbish it. We'll do that immediately and double the, the milling production. On the crushing circuit side, and we haven't restarted the crushing circuit yet, we're going to install an, another set of, of, of primary crushers. So we'll have primary crushers and an impact crusher, and then we'll double up down the track. So we've got to increase the, the CIL circuit um, and, and potentially the thickening circuit. We're making extensive changes to the concentration plant. Um, so, so really most of that money will be going into um, investment in, in the processing plant itself. We were not planning to restart the underground until the list listing was complete. Um, but it became so compelling that we, we asked Goldplatt whether they mind us investing more capital of our own and getting the underground started. So we put in significant additional capital and made safe and recommissioned the underground and started blasting, brilliant blasting there um, in, in January. Um, and that's you know, partly because tailings, as I said, became prohibitively expensive and difficult to acquire. But also, in, in, in order to run the plant efficiently and effectively, and to be able to work out what needs to be changed in the plant, we needed to be um, feeding hard, fresh hard rock through the plant, not just tailings. So that's, that's helped us a lot in being able to work out how to go, go forward. And where will you send your gold concentrate for refining? We have an elution plant on the, on the mine. At gold plant always had an elution plant. So we, we produce a dore on, on mine. And that has typically um, gone to the Rand Refinery in South Africa um, for, for final refining. We will continue to, to utilize Rand Refinery when it's appropriate, but we have also approached some refiners in Europe. Um, main reason being that, you know, with the airways that used to transport the gold having shut down effectively, um, the, the company that does the, the security company that, that does the transport for us, um, is chartering planes, and we just find that prohibitively expensive at the moment. So we are seeking potentially to send, send gold or the Dore um, to Europe through a commercial airline, which is still doing the routes. And how many jobs do you think will be created by what you're going to do at Kilimapesa and also in East Africa? There were, in, in the past, when Kilimapesa was running at its capacity at the time, roughly 200 people. So we've almost employed all of them back again. Um, albeit that we're not up to full production yet, but we'll at least double that. You know, not only will we um, become more efficient, but we are going to be upscaling a, a lot there, both on the underground production from the existing mine um, and then from the processing plant, but also we are going to be putting money into the exploration effort. Our target is to increase the resource on the existing exploration permit to between two and three million ounces of gold at a fairly low cost of discovery because the, you know, we know where the veins are. We, we know they're shallow and mostly outcropping. But the whole little village of Logorian has grown exponentially over the last 10 years. We sit on the Magori Greenstone Belt, which basically stretches from the 
Amara Triangle, uh, and you'll know the Mass Amara um, Nature Reserve or Game Reserve, all the way to Lake Victoria, just north of the Tanzanian border. And there are a couple of, of players on the belt. It's uh, Kilimapesa, and then there's Red Rock Resources, which are listed in, in, in London, and a, a couple of Chinese entities. And we're in discussions with all of those players and looking to optimize and consolidate that belt, you know, where, where it's logical. Then we'll create job opportunities and gold production for the country and royalties, et cetera, you know, right across the extent of about 100 kilometers of the Agori Belt between the Masai Mara and the Lake Victoria. If I had to come back to you in a couple of years, what do you foresee? First step is to get the production up from, you know, circa four to 6,000 ounces up to 12,000 ounces a year. And for that, we have the cap- we'll have the capital in place and we have the plan in place. Um, the next step is to double that again to around about 25,000 ounces. And that's probably the, the maximum from that particular footprint of, of, of mining, mining license. You know, but a- along with consolidating the belt and a couple of other acquisitions of similar size, you know, we would like to be at least, if you spoke to me in, in two years' time, at, at 50,000 ounces, but hopefully close to, to, to 100,000 ounces a year. So a, a bona fide, proper, you know, small to mid-cap um, market, a, a gold producer, focused primarily on East Africa, but not exclusively necessarily. That was Clear Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Gerard Kisby Green about Mayflower Capital's plans for gold mining activities in Kenya and East Africa.